What exactly is an inductor? And what can you do with it? An inductor is basically a coil of wire. Now you can wrap it around a ferrite core or another metal, or it could just be air in between it. But it's basically a coil of wire. And you could do a lot of things with an inductor. An inductor can be used to store energy. Let's connect it to a battery. And it can also create a magnetic field. So here is the positive terminal of the battery, and here is the negative terminal. The electrons will flow from the negative terminal through the inductor to the positive terminal. But conventional current is defined as the flow of positive charge. So conventional current is in the opposite direction. But as current flows through the inductor, energy from the battery is used to create a magnetic field. As the current increases, the magnetic field expands. And so in the process of expanding the magnetic field, you're putting energy to do that. When the magnetic field collapses, it releases that energy. So in that way, inductors, they can store energy by the creation of a magnetic field. The energy stored in an inductor can be calculated using this equation. In physics, capital U represents potential energy. L represents the inductance of the inductor, which is measured in Henry's. So if you go to, let's say, Radio Shack or eBay, and you see an inductor with 100 mH, this is millihenries. One Henry is equal to 1,000 millihenries. So 100 millihenries is 0.1 Henry's. So that's the unit for inductance. I is the current. So as you can see, the potential energy stored in the magnetic field of the inductor is based upon how much current is flowing in a circuit. So what you need to understand is this. As the current increases, the strength of the magnetic field increases, meaning the magnetic field also expands as well. And so you're going to have more potential energy stored in that inductor. As the current decreases, the magnetic field collapses. And so energy will be released back into the circuit. So the potential energy stored will decrease as the energy goes back to the circuit. Now let's talk about what you can do with an inductor. So one thing you can do is you can build an electromagnet using a coil of wire. So if you have a piece of metal, or the simplest thing is to take a screw. So if you find a screw in your house, this might be not the best picture. And then if you take a coil of wire and wrap it around the screw, you can create an electromagnet. Now, to increase the strength of the electromagnet, what you want to do is you want to make more coils. You want to wrap as much wire as you can around that piece of iron metal or that piece of the iron nail. So the more coils that you have, the greater the strength of the magnetic field. And basically, the electromagnet will be stronger. The second thing is you want to increase the current that you apply to this electromagnet. So if you use, let's say, a high-performing battery that can pump out a lot of current, then you'll increase the strength of the electromagnet. So once the circuit is on, if there's like a small piece of metal uh, next to it, the electromagnet will pull that piece of metal to it. And so that's a simple way to create an electromagnet. It's basically just a bunch of coils of wire wrapped around a piece of metal, and then you just apply a current to it. If it's not strong enough, just increase the current you can connect more batteries in series so you can get more current or the second thing is just wrap around more coils around that uh, piece of metal then the, the strength of the electromagnet will increase another thing that we can do with inductors is that we can transfer energy from one circuit to another so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a coil of wire and we are going to attach it to an AC source. So AC stands for alternating current. DC is direct current. Now, if you use a DC uh, current, this is not going to work very well. 
you need to use current that's constantly changing. AC current is constantly reversing in direction. Now what we're going to do is create a second coil and place it very close to the first one. And let's attach a light bulb to the second coil. So now if the AC source is strong enough and if the two coils are close to each other, the light bulb will light up. And so the way it works is that as the current in the AC source, because it's constantly changing, the magnetic field in the first coil of wire is constantly expanding and collapsing. And so because the strength of the magnetic field is constantly changing, it induces a current in the second coil, which causes the light bulb to light up. And so that's how inductors can transfer energy from one circuit into another. The most common application of this circuit is basically the transformer. So the transformer has two coils of wire. The first one is called the primary coil, which I'm going to attach it to an AC source. And the second one is called the secondary coil. Now the number of turns in these two coils, they differ. So let's say that the first coil, the primary coil, has 100 turns. And the second one, the secondary coil, has 1,000 turns. And we're going to attach this to a light bulb, particularly a, a much stronger light bulb. Now let's say the AC source has a voltage of 12 volts. Because the secondary side has more coils than the primary side, the voltage will increase. This is going to be a step up transformer. By the way, this is the circuit diagram for a transformer. Now look at the ratio between the turns in the secondary coil and the turns in the primary coil. 1000 to 100. If you divide 1000 by 100, you get a ratio of 10 to 1. So for every coil on the left side, there's 10 coils on the right side. So we get that 1 to 10 ratio. The voltage is going to be higher in the circuit that has more turns. So because the right side has 10 times more turns, the voltage on the right side will be 10 times greater. Now let's say the current on the left is 10 amps. The current on the right side is going to be 10 times less. There's a trade-off. And so you can use inductors to increase the voltage, or if you connect it in reverse, you can decrease the voltage. And if the voltage goes up, the current is going to go down. And if you decrease the voltage, the current is going to go up. But the power is the same. Power is voltage times current. So 12 times 10 will give us a power of 120 watts. Power is the rate at which energy is transferred. So if you see 120 watts, that means that every second, 120 joules of energy is being transferred. On this side, it's the same. 120 times 1 gives us 120. And so this makes sense. According to the law of conservation of energy, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So the energy that we put into one circuit must equal the energy that comes out of the second circuit, ideally speaking. Of course, you're going to lose some small amounts of energy to like friction and heat and stuff like that. But in a perfect ideal situation, the rate at which energy goes into the first circuit must equal the rate at which energy leaves the second circuit. And so thus, as we can see in this example, ideally speaking, the power is the same. What else can we do with an inductor? We can convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. But how can we do that? Well, first we need a coil of wire. And the more coils that you add, the more efficient this process will be. And let's attach it to, let's say, another light bulb. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 
a magnet. Let's say this is the north pole of the magnet and this is the south pole. So as you use energy from your hands and as you move the magnet into or out of the coil, the magnetic field inside the coil is changing. As you move into it, the magnetic field is expanded. And any time the magnetic field changes, it's going to induce a current in the coil. So as you move the magnet into the coil, if you have enough coils and if you move it fast enough, the bulb will light up. So to review, to increase the energy generated by these coils, number one, increase the number of coils. So wrap more wires around that coil and you're going to get more energy out of it. Number two, increase the speed at which you move the magnet into or out of the coil because that's going to induce more current within the coil. And so that's another way in which inductors can be used. You can use it to generate electrical energy from the mechanical energy that you use to move the magnet into or out of the coil. If you just leave the magnet in the coil, no energy will be generated. And so you have to have some type of motion. The magnetic field generated by the magnet has to be changing with respect to the coil as you move it into and out of the coil. If the magnetic field is constant, if it's not changing, no induced current will be created in the coil. So that's it for this video. That's all I got. That's my uh, two cents. And if you like it, feel free to subscribe to this channel by hitting that red button on the bottom. And don't forget to click on that notification bell. So hopefully this video was educational and useful to you. And thanks again for watching.